All right, this is the uh, TCAP practice test for grade 7, question number 52. Today we get to talk about dimensions a little bit, which is pretty awesome. This is a uh, three-dimensional question because the boxes, the cubes that we use are three-dimensional figures. Now, the closet has a height of 48 inches. So I'm going to note to myself that the whole thing from here to here, 48 inches long. So that's what I'm going to base my question off of. Raymond stacked two cube-shaped boxes in the closet. One box has a volume of 8,000 cubic inches, and the other box has a volume of 4,096 cubic inches, as shown below. Now, let's talk about box, uh, cubes for just a few seconds. A cube is like a three-dimensional square, in case you didn't know that. The issue with cubes is that all their sides are the same length. So, this length is, we call it, we use E for edge because it's the edge of the cube, is the same as this. It's also the same as how deep it is. So all three dimensions have the same basic value, which is why you get this volume equals edge to the third power. Because to do, say if I was doing a square, I would do uh, length times width or side times side. So I would say side times side is side squared. Now with edges and three dimensional figures, I have e times e times e, which gives me e to the third power, which means if e is 5, I do 5 times 5 times 5, and it gives me my volume that I'm looking for, because volume is a three-dimensional concept. Area is a two-dimensional concept. We're going to use that information to try to help us figure out how long the edges are of our boxes. So I'm going to try to find the blue edge first, the uh, one for this box. And in order to do that, I have to do basically the opposite of cubing something or multiplying itself, uh, the three sides together and they're all the same. It's called cube root. Let's talk about square root for three seconds. A little bit more than that, actually. So if I have a square and it has sides of four, four here and four here, because the square matches, right? They have to be the same. You will notice now, if you could count, if I hadn't made them so small, that there are 16 individual boxes. So sometimes mathematicians will say, what is four squared? That comes from the idea that it's an actual square with sides four. They want to know how many boxes it takes to fill it in. And it's 16. They may also say, hey, I've got a square of 16 boxes, and I need to figure out how long the sides are. To do that, I use what's called square root. And the square root of 16, of course, is 4, because we have 16 boxes here, and it, the sides were 4. Similarly, we have that same concept going on when we talk about cubes. In a cube, if I have sides 2, because it's way easier to draw that than anything else, If I have sides 2, so it's side 2 here, side 2 here, and then uh, a side 2 here. So I say, if I have a side of 2 and I'm going to make a cube out of it, that's what the third means, what is it? And of course, it's 8. Now the opposite of that, if I need to know if I have 8 uh, one by one blocks and I need to figure out what the side lengths are, I'm going to do what's called cube root. Right there. So I get that answer to be 2. Now on to our problem. The issue is we're going to have to use that cube root information to figure it out. So I'm going to take the cube root of 8,000 to help me find out what the, dis what the blue distance is from here to here. In order to do that in a calculator, I'm using the TI-30X. You may have to look for a button that looks like this. That button on the TI-30X, you hit the second button, which is the yellow one, I think. Yeah, it's the yellow one. And then you're going to hit the button that makes exponents, which is this. So you hit second, and then you hit this to get the cube root thing to pop up. But first, you have to tell it what root you want it to use. So in your calculator, type 3, then hit the second button and uh, the button to make the root. And you should get something that looks a little bit like this. And I'm going to make sure it does while I'm standing here. Yeah, it looks like this. And then you're going to type in 8,000. And you should get a side length of 20. So the distance from here to here is 20. Now let's talk about how far it is from here to here. So we're going to go up more from that blue spot. So all I'm going to do now is take the cube root of the 496 because it's a cube and I only want one side. So I do the same thing. 
This is not, I'm just doing the X here because that's what it looks like in the calculator. Technically, the 3 would be here. But you're going to go ahead and type in 3 into your calculator. Then you're going to hit that X or second button and then get the root thing to pop out. And if you do the cube root of 4096, you should get a value of 16, which means that the value from here to here is 16. All I have to do now, because the question says, if a third shape box is added to the top of the stack, what is the greatest possible edge length of this cube? What it wants to know is if I have another box, and I'll choose green because why not, right? If I add another box on top of it, what's the likely, what's the largest distance from here to here. And all I'm going to do is just subtract because we're only talking about one dimension now because we only want to know the height of the figure. So I'm going to take my 48 from before. I'm going to subtract my 16 and I'm also going to subtract my 20 and I get a final answer of 12 inches because that 12 would get me from here to here, then my 16 would take me from here to here, then my 20 would take me from here, all the way to the bottom of that closet. So the answer to number 52, after all of that and lots of explanation, is F.